This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Twenty twenty one, I loved you. I hated you. I loved you. Hi, by the way, <laughs> I missed you. Having the longest isolation in the world, three cheers for Australian lockdown, I had plenty of time to read in 2021. I suppose I'm really grateful for that. I'm really, really grateful for the mass of incredible literature that I was exposed to and read in 2021. Today I present to you my top 10 reads of 2021, devoting a little bit more time to each of them to explore why it was so important to me and why it was so profound that it made it to the top 10 list. This list does not include rereads because if it did, I would have the same books every year. It's a cyclical comfort thing. So these are all books that I have read for the first time cover to cover. If I can pick them up. For the first time in 2021. These are the creme de la crop. To me, all for varying reasons, which I will explore. Also, hi, I'm Dakota. I talk about reading and writing. I study literature and creative writing. It's my career. It's my entire life. It's an obsession, passion. Call it what you will. You're now here with me. First book we have is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is contemporary fiction. It explores the psychological dynamics and repercussions of grooming, so there's a content warning in itself. To some, a 15 year old girl, inherently naive and innocent, as is a condition of girlhood, is manipulated by her male teacher into love, we'll call it love. And so through from a first person narration from the protagonist, Vanessa, we see an alternate timeline in which she's 15 and the horrible thing is unfolding and happening and she is learning as she goes and then as an adult reflecting on what happened and trying to process and heal from it. The entire novel is impossibly raw and real and gritty and it doesn't gloss over the dark parts that are often glossed over in these areas. The author has my utmost respect for exploring this and displaying this in a way that is real. It's tragic, it's twisted, it's transcendent. It made me stare at my wall for two hours after reading it. And it made me realize things that I wish I didn't. And I think that this was absolutely one of the most important reads that I read in 2021. I'm sitting on my floor, so I'm quite mobile. So I just like, I don't wanna keep moving around. So you'll probably have to deal with that. The next is Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vong, and this is a collection of contemporary poetry. My favourite thing about this recommendation is that when I was first starting on YouTube a few months ago, this was recommended to me, and now, after I've cultivated an audience, I can recommend it right back to you because this was one of the best damn things I've ever read. Ocean Vong explores themes like love, loss, war, sexuality, fitting into America as a queer person of colour. He writes with such elegance and grace, but somehow so much passion and so much volume, this demands to be heard. He is by far one of the best voices in our generation, and that is, without a doubt, I would sell my soul just to read his grocery lists. Ocean Vong holds me in the palm of his hand, and I cannot wait for his next collection out in April, I believe. I think April. Before we continue, I'd like to quickly gush over today's sponsor, Squarespace. So Squarespace is a platform that makes creating and maintaining websites easy and fun. It's perfect for anything from online stores to blogs. And I say this from experience because I recently built my own website from scratch. I'm quite proud of it actually. <laughs> you can see it here. There's so many aspects I get to play with, like the design, email campaigns and member areas. I also love that I can track my analytics and insights so easily. I loved setting it up and it was so much easier than I'd ever imagined. So you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial and then once you're ready to launch your own website, go to squarespace.com slash Dakota Warren for 10% off your first domain or website. The next is Second Place by Rachel Kosk. 
and this is a contemporary fiction. So basically, a woman in her 50s invites a famed and successful artist whom she idolizes to her coastal lush property as part of an exchange, I suppose, A, for his side to have inspiration and creative flow and just time away. And she was looking for excitement, character development. She was looking for an aspect of herself that she thought was missing that she could find via others who she idolized. It completely turns to chaos, somehow very calm chaos, and it explores themes of male privilege, female fate, familial bonds, human relationships. As I've said when I've spoken about this book in a previous video, I'm yet to have read something that makes me actually connect with a middle-aged protagonist, but this book did it for me. The way Cusk made me feel like a 50-year-old woman having an identity crisis. That is talented writing right there. It also explores the mother wound from the perspective of the mother, and that's something that really helped me grasp an understanding of the mother wound. This was my first book from Cusk. And so I went into it completely without expectations, except knowing that Cusk was successful. And let me tell you, Cusk deserves every inch of her success and more. Such a talented writer. The next is Bestiary by Julio Cortazar. Said that wrong, definitely. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Latin American literature has my heart. This is classic literature, it's a collection of short stories, and each short story is just as twisted and original as the next. They're shocking, and they're clever, and they all contain the most unexpected twists in them. Apparently the author based them off of his own nightmares and fears, and that makes sense. It's also quite funny because he fears love triangles and vomiting up bunny rabbits. <laughs> Each tale is impossibly captivating in its provocative strangeness, and that strangeness, that unmatched strangeness, is what I love about Latin American literature. The next read is Paradise Rot by Jenny Haval. So our protagonist, Joe, once again first person narration, yes I have an affinity for first person narration. It lets you bond with the protagonist a lot more because you get to know their internal thoughts and desires and how they process things, which is special. Anyway, the protagonist Joe arrives in UK from her homeland of Norway to study abroad. She lodges with a girl named Carol in this decaying mess of an ex-factory that they live in and what ensues is so ordinary but so extraordinary in the way that it is perceived. You don't know if it's real or surreal. It's a fever dream. It makes you wonder who was real, who was an imagination, what was symbolic of what, if everything actually happened, if nothing actually happened. The themes of horror and sex and <laughs> bodily fluids and decay, they're persistent and they make this book so unique. And when I first read this I was like, wow, this is what it means for a writer to find their voice. Jenny Haval is also an incredibly talented and multifaceted artist from Norway. And I miss Norway very much, so I must just read Norwegian literature for now. <laughs> the next will come as no surprise to anybody, and it's A Secret History by Donna Tartt. This is contemporary fiction, but will absolutely be classic literature. I can't believe that I read this book for the first time last year either. I'd picked it up previously, but was intimidated by the sheer size of it and the context, which is quite mature, I suppose. But my classmates at university, you guessed it, art students, treated this book as a bible, so I had to see what the fuss was about. And I saw what the fuss was about. To sum, our protagonist, you guessed it, first person narration, finds himself entangled in this cult-like, clicky group of academic-based students. They really indulge in what they're learning, which is ancient Greek philosophy, language, history, etc. Uh, they kill someone, they perform rituals, this is no spoilers, this is all in the first page. It's one of the books where after you finish it, even though it's quite a big boy, you wish you hadn't read it so you could read it for the first time again. It's that incredible. Donna Tartt's character development is incredible. She makes you somehow despise every single unlikable character, but somehow wish you were them, or with them, or part of them. It took her nine years to write this book and one week for it to become a bestseller and that speaks enough in itself. It is deliciously twisted, meticulously calculated, and so well done. The next is classic literature fiction, The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. 
I probably butchered that. I love Russian literature just as much as I love Latin American literature. It is deliciously dark and morbid and twisted and delightfully philosophical. This book follows the devil arriving in Moscow accompanied by a beautiful naked witch and a black cat with an affinity for chess and vodka. I know, how very Russian, but wait, there's more. They arrive with the sole intent to wreak havoc on an atheist town. So impossibly Russian, we love it. The philosophical themes in this are god tier. It's also just a really funny, witty, fast-paced read. It's clever. I would not say this book is an advanced read, but I would also not say it is a beginner for someone who hasn't dappled in classic or Russian literature. I have a video on recommendations for classic literature for beginners, which includes some Russian recommendations. I will link that below because this is an incredible book, but it's best enjoyed when you know how to enjoy it, if that makes sense. The next is The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez, and this is a collection of short stories, contemporary fiction. I picked this up at my favorite bookstore, shout out Metropolis, because A, the cover is dazzling, and B, because it was on the staff recommendations table, and I trust staff recommendations with my life. So I came into this with zero expectations, and I left with, mm, let's just say, an exploded brain. The author is Latin American, so do I even need to say that the tales are deliciously twisted, absurd, obscene, erotic, dark? Each story is chaotic and unique, and I couldn't put the book down. It's merciless, it's brutal, it's savage. Everything is cruel and erotic. I think my favorite part of the book is the magic realism, the way that witches and demonic possessions are so casually and nonchalantly mentioned, like it is a part of everyday life. And that paralleled to the realistic recounts of the streets of Argentina is very interesting. Next up we have A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf, and this is classic literature, non-fiction. Up until the end of last year, got myself on that one, up until the end of last year, I had put Virginia Woolf into the box of the romantics that I was taught to analyze at university, like the Bronte sisters, the Louisa May Alcott, and so on. How wrong was I? How wrong was I? I tend to avoid those types of works because A, university ruined them, and B, I'm not a fan of that idea of romance and love, etc. When I was finally convinced to pick this book up and read it without bias, my world was changed. Virginia Woolf is a natural storyteller. Her voice demands to be heard. In this she explores A, what it means to be a woman, and B, what it means to be a woman in the writing industry, and she does touch on the romantics authors that I'd previously stated. I wouldn't say that this was a favourite of mine because it was a fun, exciting, compelling read. It's quite a bleak read, but the context within it is absolutely imperative and this changed my way of thinking massively. Now my mission is to keep my content real and genuine and not skip out on recommendations because they might not be widely accepted. I know that's already a red flag, but I will explain it, I promise. So to contrast from my last recommendation I have today, Love is a Dog from Hell by Charles Bukowski. Before I even begin to describe the contents of this poetry collection, I must preface this by saying Bukowski is, for lack of a better word, a piece of shit. I would absolutely not be supporting his works if he was still alive. Being a famed writer of the 60s and 70s does not excuse or justify the accepted ideals of that era and society. But this collection and all of Bukowski's writings have taught me the most on the whole art versus artist debate. This book is a collection of his poetry on love and his idea of love. And if you can look past the poems that are piles of shit and totally misogynistic, there are some absolute diamonds and that taught me the most about reading critically. I believe the art versus artist debate is something that can be learnt, a skill that can be exercised. Reading his poetry critically and enjoying it for me is me reclaiming the femininity that is objectified within this book. Bukowski has undeniable talent. His works are funny, original, his writing voice is so unique. Perhaps the fact that a pretentious asshole wrote it before he died adds to the value of it. Some of my favourite poems in the whole entire universe lay within this book, but they are sandwiched between absolute grotesque poems. I wish somebody would compile a collection of Bukowski's poetry that 
isn't sandwiched between pieces of shit. Maybe it's a strategy to make the good poem seem even better, and if it is, it's working. Anyway, there we have it. There is my 10 top reads of 2021. I hope you enjoyed them. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your support and your love, and a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I love you, and I'll see you next time.